You're listening to Talking Heads with Naughty, hosted by Earl the Pearl. On Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Talking Heads with Naughty is brought to you by Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Eddie Menace Live, Fine Threads, First Caribbean Bank, Janae Zoom Form Center, John's Department Store, Jerkus Wild, KFC, Naughty Johnny's, First Seaside Games, Prince Masters, and Tropical Gyros. Good afternoon, good day, happy Thursday, Talking Heads Thursdays here with your boy Pearlie in the house here on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. It's so good to be here with y'all today. Boy, it's hot out there today too though. Ooh, this is what you call the dog days of summer. It's really a hot day, so hydrate people. I got my water. Just make sure you drink lots of water, stay hydrated. We don't need you falling out in this heat. Um, and don't drink, don't, don't be drinking in this heat like that. Oh no, that ain't good for you. But it's good to be here. I'm so happy we got we have an open line. We're going to talk some things. I see some stuff coming from the Commissioner of Police. I see some stuff coming from the Minister of National Security. We can see what buzzing you with making you all feel like you all want to talk. But, um, hey, you want to be a talking head? Here's how you can become a talking head. Brought to you by BTC. Just call me at 323-6232. That's 323-6232. 325-4316, 325-4316, toll free is 242-300-5720, that's 242-300-5720, and you can always text me on the text line powered by BTC at 422-4796, 422-4796. That's how you get me, that's how you become a talking head. What's going on in the headlines today? It's time for Headliners. Everything that's making headlines in the 242. Brought to you by the Fine Threads. The headline in the Guardian, Go Ahead for New Hospital. Health Ministry secures environmental approval. Apparently, the Ministry of Environmental Health have given them approval to go ahead with the new hospital. So I guess that's going to start soon. Exumians feeling negative impact of Sandals closure. Mitchell, GBPA working to turn citizens against the government. I won't say something so bad, but I can hold that. Minus Box Pintard Bank Reform Plan. That's quite interesting. Minus Box Pintard Bank Reform Plan. And in the business section, we've got Urca lifting restrictions on gaming ads, which will grow industry, domestic gaming sector, and economic powerhouse. Ministry of Agriculture launches FDA certified agro processing certification course. Org urges standalone appeals commission for procurement system. Some Andros residents sign up for digital banking after exposure. Insurance premiums to remain high as reassurers take conservative line on potential hurricanes, officials say. That's what's going on in the headline. We get a new hospital. I, I, but I, I don't, I, I don't want to call man. I just don't know. I don't know. But I mean, what do you think about it? It's, it, it, it's it, where they putting it. I, I've heard some other stories about the, the, this, the swamp, the, the green space. How it's going to take away from that? I, I don't know. You, y'all tell me. Um, and but this is interesting. Mitchell Grand GBAP working to turn city government. Y'all doing a good job of that on, on your own. You ain't need GBPA to do that. They are doing a very good job of that for the citizens to, I mean, basically what I hear, and, you know, I could be wrong. Y'all could tell me if I'm wrong, you know. I, I might say the wrong thing, and y'all may not like what I say, so correct me if I'm wrong. Hey, Anton. Um, Texter says, great show as usual. That's the dumbest statement they could make. They said they ain't telling no one about the case. They might as well cancel the investigation. And I want to I want, I want to get into that. Next pers- uh, text is, Pearly, good day. That police investigation is a big flam. It won't be no end because it ain't no beginning. And, you know, the commissioner made a statement saying in order not to compromise the investigation, there will be no further updates other than to tell us the investigation going on as well. 
And then the minister <laughs> sends a statement on the Ministry of National Security letterhead. I take it as a political statement. And if you can do that, you should send it on the PLP letterhead, but not on the National Security, saying bringing up the situation with uh, F and M Chairman Dwayne Sands and and talking about he's going to stay out of the investigation and all that. And you know, fine, you could say you and you can say you respect the commissioner's viewers, but ain't nobody asking you all to tell us every step of the investigation. You know, we just want to know the investigators are here. We want to know that they're working. That's it. We understand the details are not, you don't give the details up because you don't want to compromise the case. But telling us the investigators in the UK here is compromising the case? Is that really what's going on? Telling us that you can't give us enough that it's going well, it should be completed by September, it should be completed by October, November, whatever, that's compromising the case? I might know any better. Tell me if I'm wrong, people. I might not know any better. But I don't see how that, I don't see how that is is compromising the case. We just want to know that you're doing your job. We just want to know that there's, there's some transparency and it's going to be investigated. At the end of the day, we know what's happening. That's it. We don't want to tell us that you've been to this house and you spoke to that person and this person said that. No, we don't need to know. Now we can find out if there's a trial, we'll find out then. Or at the end of the investigation, you can give us details, then we'll know what's going on. But at this point, we want to know you're doing an investigation. We won't be sure that, and what is wrong in telling us that the investigators are here? Call her what you're saying. How you doing? What you say? Hey, Bradley, what's up? Hi, I'm right here. How are you? I mean, as you running hot, man. You running hot on the radio. You just speak the truth, man. I just, Let all I want to know is what's going on. Just tell us the truth. That's all. My thing is, I'm calling to comment with regard to the investigation process. I don't appreciate the Minister of National Security and the Commissioner of Police saying that um, they're not going to make the this investigation public. First of all, the police are paid for behemoth people taxes. They work for the public. So this investigation should be updated on a weekly basis. Behemoth people need to know, one, who is the committee or the person that have been appointed to investigate. We need to know these people first, last name, and what organizations they are attached to. Because, again, they're being paid to do the... I'm assuming they're being paid by taxpayers' dollars to investigate this matter, so we have a right to know. Yes. Um, as well as we need to know the intricate details of how far, how deep this investigation got. What are the things that they dig up that trans that came out from the investigation? We need to know who are the other parties in the police um, that are involved in this corruption. We need to know. Bahamian people need to know what they're talking about. Um, we are not going to tell the Bahamian people anything until the investigation is concluded. No, it seems to me that they buy in their time to hack a story, to write a Tyler Perry script, and come back to us and tell us, okay, everybody, this is what happened. Sell, no, sell, no, 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 no. Sell no, you no. a dream. We need to take this. This needs to be treated as what they do in the United States. You know, when they bring, what, what do they call it again? When they put them before the Congress and the Senate and everybody asks them. Congressional questions. hearing. Yeah. We need a hearing. Because the human people have a right to know. We, I, every time so you, you're calling, calling for a commission of inquiry? Yeah, when I go in the food store, my bill is coming up to four hundred dollars per liter. Jesus, what you okay? eating so? With that, when okay. I just get my power bill, my power bill is five hundred and twelve dollars. I pay. I I don't pay something on my power bill. I clean my power bill off. You you are uh, you married or you're single 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 listen, lady? I have people I live with. Okay, I, I ain't got you. So. Understand? I have uh -huh. roommates. But okay. my whole point is, we pay our bills. Okay. As good citizens that help. To do these things to fix the roads, make sure the schools they see, um, they're starting the renovation for the schools. Somebody Don't go there with fix no road. That's Don't cause the road ain't fixed. Don't go there with fix no road. The road ain't fixed. They're crying for promotion and raise and different stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they want just no, 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 no. Okay. We need to know what the hell going on. All right, I agree. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Boo. Thanks for calling. Yeah, the lady says she want to know what's going on. Call you on there. How you doing? My brother, good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, sir. How are you? Two quick points. Okay. First of all, the greatest hush or silence of politicians always use, and I don't know where they get it from, and I think they must think we are all stupid, mm -hmm. is to say there is an ongoing investigation or matters before the court, and you cannot talk about it. Now, let's break that down. Okay. If you turn on Fox News, CN, SBC, or SBC, MSN, or MSNBC, all day. Uh -huh. 
for 24 hours during the Trump investigation. Which were they talking about, brother? The trial. The trial. What was said? Now, they, 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 the put, they put they put sketches said, show him sleeping stuff like that. It, 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 let me tell you something. I what frustrates me most of all, and I will say it publicly. Somehow, this administration must think this is 1967. 1973, or somewhere before the 2000s when Bahamians got sense. Now, stop that. Don't do that. I think Bahamians always had sense before Bahamians are more informed. That's an absolutely disingenuous, stupid thing to say. Second, my second point is this. Uh huh. If, really, if I say to you, I believe someone is in your house, uh huh. But someone in your house, in your drawer, in your room, even I did not prejudice. Prejudice with someone in your house doing, you know. That's so true. Let's not do that, man. Okay, you just say and someone the in my house. Thing I want to say, the final thing I want to say. Uh huh. I do not feel safe with the Minister of National Security, whose job is to ensure my safety. So you think you don't think in he's fact, doing his job? In fact, I don't think he's ever done his job for me. Okay. Because under this guy, I've seen that the criminal could get you in front of the court. In front of the court, and yeah. I mean in national security, I mean fiasco. I, I thought the country should have shot to get locked down. When someone can kill a witness, allegedly, in front of a courthouse. I wonder what uncle, I wonder if they found any. They caught, they, did they catch anybody for that? No, they didn't. In the history of this country, we have never had this level of abrasive in your face. We don't care because y'all can't do nothing about violence. Under this Minister of National Security, I would give him one advice as I leave this station. Do the job, please. Because we have you say. Wow. That's the job. Can you just do that? Wow. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Boy, there's some heavy words there, people. What you think? Tell me what y'all think. See what this text is saying here. I have a number of texts. Um... Apparently, the police cases, like North Abaco case, under the rug. I don't think that's under the rug. I think that's going to come up. Apparently, tell them don't try saying that it's AI because you can hear another person in the background telling their guy what to say. Okay. I'm reading with this place. You text my whole name. And when they call us corrupt, we get mad. These same police. Apparently, and when they call us corrupt, we get mad, these same police hostilians from the taxpayers' money and won't carry their home. No one knows how much they are paid. AI, them Nadines to go home, and that half breed will never be cop in our country. Oh, Lord, I'm lazy. I, I really should read these before I read these. Hey, eh? when did they fire? They did not. When did they fire Michael Johnson? The annual report referred him as the same dismissed from the RBPF. Please read the press release. He's not fired. He was he's on guardian, what is garden leave? On garden leave. Had this been a constable or very low rank officer, his life would have been destroyed immediately. And and some police officers, some young police officers are feeling sorta of in their feelings on that. Um one more. Um Great show as usual. Investigators don't want to come because everyone involved end up dead. Those invest. <laughs> oh, a lot of noisy. Come on, man. Call you on the air. Help me out. Help me hey, out, caller. Going? Help me out. How you doing? Everything good. I, I just wanted to. I, someone was telling me, one of my best friends was telling me, man, they had to put it. 15 cars went to get these last yesterday. Where? Yeah. Just around, around, around Nassau? Around, yeah. And then well, you, you, show me, you show me one, 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 one video where these guys, I'm. Going inside someone's house, they was hype. But it's going to be our Lord Tiffany going around, you know. But see, yeah, yes, yes like yesterday it. my son, we parked in front of my mother's house, having a little, my nephew went off to law school, we have a little dinner. Come outside, they went, and my son can't take his, he's a doctor, took his bag with his stethoscope and everything, and it just gone. I mean, he, at fault to some, because he didn't lock his, his back door for some reason, didn't lock, and they just went to check all the cars, doors in the car, in the car doors in the yard, and took it. The people get teeth, but their teeth cries off the cross. Yes, ago. You should, I know, listen to me, I know Rania was in state from then. You can't even leave a quarter in your car. If you leave it there, you better hide it somewhere. Because if they see it, they can break your glass. And yeah, and break your glass costs you a couple hundred dollars for 25 cents. Watch out. I was parked on oh, fish fry 
a few years ago, right on the side of the police station. Probably you won't believe they still breaking the car. Right? Wow. <laughs> it, fish fry right there. On the side of the police and station. That's right, in the mid, that's right in the heart of fish fry. You got to see something. On the side of the police station, my car would get broken. Break and I went in the police station. And they don't have no cameras. They don't have nothing wrong. No wow. surveillance, nothing wrong. They're not going to lose that one. Wow. Twice, twice I park on fish fry. And, and I, I park and open one time. You know what I mean? One time I park and open me and the other everything. Uh, a bag and everything, the bar trunk, everything. Cause we, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Right, right on the side with cricket. Uh, right on the side of uh, the, the entrance to get the cricket club. Yeah. Right uh-huh. in front of the, the road. Man, them guys, I'm still going inside the car. You know where? It's nowhere for you to park around you like that. Because these guys, I'm going around. Yes, I got to go around shopping for coconut. And good yeah. Day. They go around shopping for cars. Well, I letting people, if you see me driving the car, trust me, I ain't leaving nothing in the car. I ain't leaving no quarters, no bag, nothing in the car. I letting you know that now, people. Yeah, man, these, these guys, some these guys, some I talk about, and the people, them, if you know your son don't have these things, he coming home every day, you know you won't give him nothing. How you, how you give him a friend? You, you get an iPhone, iPhone 15 or 14, and you get a little bubble up, and you won't buy that, and he, you won't ever give him no money to buy anybody, and he ain't working. And he coming with all kinds of new Jordans and things, all kinds of things, so big screen TV, and you ain't asking no questions. You just... He sent all another cop and Tommy up and thing and all that. And he ain't waking. Ain't waking. You know, so the, a lot of these parents don't know what's going on. There's cloaking them. You know, and I don't feel bad when the police come there and carry some of them. You know, the parents, them, oh, she's 60 something. Say, no, man, she knows what's going on in the house. But she is afraid to tell them to, uh, 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 or else you can pull out if you stop these things. You know what I mean? Let me tell you something. My children couldn't bring home a pencil. If I, Whatever you need for school, I buy. They couldn't bring home a pencil. If you bring home one Xbox game, who Xbox this game is? Lil Johnny. Let me call Lil Johnny, mommy. Do you know your son, let alone my son, is that you, you're fine with that? Because you ain't bringing nothing to my house. We ain't supposed to bring it in my house because ain't no police coming there for me like that. See, Pearly, just start from teeping from when you send them going in the food store, carrying candy. Yep. And when you go shopping and you won't be the little hip, they tell them carry it back and you let them keep it. It yep. starts from well. Yep. See, we, this thing is start when women get beneath to go home big enough early. This part, this stem from small. That's like a plant. Yep. When you hold it up, and sometimes you have you got to go. And you, they, 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 they developing these these criminals. Yeah. You see the son them bringing these things from home. You understand? They come from. They work in. They work in the city, city market and thing and all that. They know they ain't gonna receive none of the things, and they still allow some of them sit down and eat and drink and do it. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. So that's what it is right there. That's why. That's why early. We, are, we have generation and generation thieves them going up. Boy. When, you, when you catch one set of thieves, then we get the rest of them coming growing up small. And I, I see it every day. But we got, we got to, that kind of that. I, the kids were in Chippenham. I talk to them all the time. I try to lecture them and show them. One get himself in trouble doing footage in the little petty shop that he can't go back in there now. Get bowed yeah, there and I glad his father discipline him in the right way to teach him you can't be doing these crazy things. No, you can't be doing them, man. You know, and the people, them, like I said, the parents, them, you got to start from home, man. You, you got to. Them, bring these things from home. They wearing all these expensive clothes and, and all that, and they ain't saying nothing. What do you think happen? You got to work for it, people. Work for what you got. All right, buddy. Do it out if you ain't got it. Thanks for calling. Call you on there. How you doing? Yeah, Paul. Yeah, Paul. What's happening, Muff? Uh, I am advised to like the gentleman too for the National Security Minister too. Oh. He in free down, right? Yeah. Okay, the Igler was in free down last time. And yeah. The, the Igler come on a talk show one week after the election. And the Igler say, election night, by 8 o'clock, he was home. Oh. And the Igler live like in uh, Orange Hill. So you know, from, free, from, from, from Camp Road out there, you had to leave from Ron when they said, the polls ain't closed till 6. Yeah. So, must the man know? When you see around on 680, <laughs> back it up, man. He actually, I like, back it up and start the head, oh, man. You might just start, because, uh, you know, you have to count, recount, and uh-huh. all that. And if the man could be home by 8 o'clock, uh-huh. you know what message would he get? So, <laughs> you know, yeah, all you can hear is, boss, things ain't look good, man. From around 680, close, the ball gets close, 610. Uh-huh. And from 680, all you hear is, boss. Boy, things ain't look good. <laughs> Let's start checking it down and try to get out of camp before we get gang up in the back of the <laughs> What? Now. Yes, sir. Now, the lady, or the first caller with the lady, who's saying, well, 
The belief you hadn't paid from the taxpayers' money and we paying them. And uh-huh. But apparently we get find out that some other people paying them too and paying them more. <laughs> Pretty to call you a sport. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> call you on there. How you doing? Mr. Medusa, <laughs> let's take our first break. When we come back, we can get into the bus. <laughs> this is Pearly and Talking Heads Thursday, Garden Radio FM 96.9. We'll be right back, people. We'll be right back. We're going to give you a check every week for a year. Percy Fenton Plan. I will gain you with it. Percy Fenton Plan. Dream big, we will help you live it. Percy Fenton Plan, Island Game, we got you. Percy Fenton Plan is a must. Come play the game, you know, cause your best chance is with us. The most trustworthy name is Percy's Island Game. So put 20 on your account and ride this Island Game. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast. Providing more of what you need closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at cancercenter.com. Together when everybody out yeah. fried chicken we are free bucket for the crow share a bucket together everybody go live Ooh. crispy original when we're online book it together under the new dance craze hot afc summer bucket deal eight pieces of your favorite fried chicken and four buttery biscuits with options to add family fries a two liter switcher and four pineapple biscuits starting at twenty dollars kfc it's finger licking good put your best foot forward this school year by shopping at john's for your back to school footwear needs from top Toddlers to college students. Have your child looking smart in a pair of Skechers, Nikes, Hush Puppies, Sperry Brand Styles, and many more. John's collection of durable and sharp styles will have your child stepping with confidence all year round. Need socks and a belt? John's has got you. And don't forget our new Spray Ground or J World backpack and lunch containers too. You can find all this and more with the best prices and customer service in town at John's on Rosetta Street and Carmichael Road. You're listening to Talking Heads with Naughty. Hosted by Earl the Pearl on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. It's time for the buzz. What are you buzzing on? Brought to you by John Shoes. Ah, oh boy. Ah, oh boy. <laughs> Talking Heads, Thursday with Pearly in the house. Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. <laughs> muff, muff, muff. You say Muff tell him 6.30, he thinks the boss today looking good? <laughs> Call you on the air. How you doing? Hello. Hi, how are you? Good morning, how are you doing? I, I good, you know. Thank God for life. Thank God for oh. life. A little painful, but thank God for life. Thank God for life. I just have to let this fly, but I ain't gonna let this fly. Didn't Talk to me. I can't hear you. Put the little phone little closer to you, but I can't hear you too good. No, I say I thought, I say I was gonna let this fly, but I'm not gonna let it fly. Okay, what you ain't gonna let slide? Now, on the weekend past, right? Uh-huh. I had a celebration for the oldest person in my community. Okay. Which is 110. 110? Yeah. Wow, okay. 110. Uh-huh. Family, members, friends, associates, everybody there. Even the old woman in the front of the TV, right? Okay. That and this came there. Yeah. We get, we get that and this. I spoke to some person who I know. I pull a hand. Okay. Family pull a hand and they came, right? Okay. Do the interview. Pastor Morrison was there too, which is her pastor. Okay. All woman, Mama Millie, right? She's yeah. Talking and everything in good senses. Give a little talk for the news and everything. They talked to the pastor. I then the later in the community, I had a little speech. And you know they haven't aired that. I'm serious. We have, now you. <laughs> I said a woman. So why they come and carry all that? Would they come and videotape and do all that in the air? You sure you ain't miss it? You sure they didn't air it the next day and you just miss it? I didn't see it. I went on their page to today. Unless I miss it, but I look again and I still haven't seen it. Did you call them and ask them? And if I'm corrected, I will apologize. Did you call and ask them? To this day, I haven't seen it. Pardon me? Did you call the newsroom and ask them? 
I'm not going to because it's not the first time. Okay. We always have events in this community, um, um, holy, and if they look around and they don't see a member of parliament or some kind of minister or someone, uh-huh. they don't do nothing. Well, then maybe you asking thing. the wrong people. You should be calling guardian. I, but on a serious note, right? Uh-huh. I, am I serious? We need to get it together in this country, you know, because that was something positive. It is, yeah. Well, Somebody to make 110. Good. God only spoil, promise you three score and 10, so you may that's pass 70. That's a blessing. Up, I understand. Right in the front of the DV. That's 40 waiting years' blessings. See, yeah, waiting to see, see herself. Oh, you know, boy. Because she's very, very, she have it all intact. And you know that was a letdown. I felt so bad. Do you understand? Text for to take, take the text number. Take. Is, I want to say this to Zedaness, especially Clint Watson. Clint went there to make a difference. Clint ain't no lying no more in my eyes. So Clint make no difference. Because he pulled the punches there, and I know that. Okay? Zedaness is not. And this I say this to all political parties, not just this government in here. It's not owned by no political party. People station. That's the people. You're talking about the people station. My foot. That ain't no people station. Well, That's the political party station. Stop your slipping foolishness. That was wrong. What you all did. Do you have? You take the time. You come there that evening. You do your little stuff, and you still ain't take the time to air that. That's something positive. We have a lot of murder and a lot of nonsense. This one teeth and corrupt <laughs> this and all of that. That was something good you could have put on. Text me at 422-479. Listen to me, darling. Text me at 4247969, the name and everything like that. And be in the same industry. I'll make a phone call and find out what's going on, okay? What to do? Um, give the producer that information, and I'll just get it from Right. The producer, take, 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 take the phone number and uh, the information from, from uh, this caller, and then we can, um, I'll see if I can help out. Yeah, go ahead, darling. Like I said, I wasn't even mention that because I stopped stooping to their level. Okay. This corruption, what happened on the floor? Uh huh. If I was the commissioner of police, I would do the honorable thing, and I really would have resigned. Wow. Because it, to think be so? honest with you, you can never take the head out of mess. You, it, when you see things like this happen, it's embarrassing even to the top. It is, it is an embarrassment to the police force, and hopefully. I'm telling you, and then yeah. you think we can't get no voice, or we can't stoop no lower. Here goes something like this. This ain't nothing which you just hesitate with. This something we should have been dealt with to show the people that say, well, you know what? That was serious. We need to deal with this right away. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then show results, baby. Just deal with it. Not like you procrastinating and stuff like that. That is wrong. Well, hopefully we'll get this thing. Hopefully they'll get it investigated. We'll see what's going on. And like yeah. I say, let's get investigated. The chips fall where they may. Let the heads roll and need the roll. Exactly. And let's that's clean up the mess. They can't touch it. Sometimes some things just be big and ugly. You know what I mean? Well, the Bahamian people, the Bahamian people want results. The Bahamian people yeah. want to be, they want their confidence in the police force, police yeah. force restored. So this has to happen and it has to happen as quickly as possible. But give the number to the no, just hold on. He's going to take the okay. information from you, and then he'll give it to me. So just hold on for the producer, and he'll talk to you right now. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you for calling. Okay, um, let's get a couple, of tech, a couple of the texts here. See, Debbie, I, I pay close attention to what I say. Uh, they, Christ, they stole Christ, <clears throat> their Christ off the cross. They'll take the cross and bring a tractor to excavate Mount Calvary to self-fulfill. Wow. Correction, Thief Christ off the cross. They take the cross and bring a tractor. <laughs> wow. Wow. But listen, hey, this, we, got, we, we really got to stop Thief in there. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, it is almost, it's, it's a violation of, of you. People coming and stealing your things. You work hard for your stuff. And they just go and take your stuff. Just take it like they own it. That's not, come on, man. Good afternoon, Pearly. We on the Luther have been, ca- uh, been catching hell for the myths the most of the year. Last night, the power was off for hours. The cable is off. And on right now, I'm listening to you on 96.9, and every 15 minutes, the cable kicks out. This has been going on too long. And pe- I feel for you all in Luther. I feel for you all every day. When the lights go off, and I saw I cussing and carrying on, so, and that ain't happening every day to me, so I, I know what you all going through, and this, this heat ain't playing. It's miserable at night when the light is off. It's miserable in the day. It's miserable all the time. You can't have a normal life. And the basic things of water and electricity is important. And we got to get it right and stop the lip service, man. Let's get this right, people. 
Let's get this right, man. Our brothers and sisters in Lutheran need relief. They need relief, and they need it not next month. They need it now. Uh, they stole mostly Nissan notes, so I guess they're getting ready for a crime spree because it seems like they're supercharged cars. The police can't catch them. They think that, well, it might be that for parts, too. Great show as usual. This actually started from y'all going on the food store thief and grape. Really, you know that I never thief no grape. I do that one time. My daddy, you know, I can tell you what he did. He spanked me. But this is your boy, JJ. I send that text. I mean to do that, but I tell my boys that my old man told my son, if you get locked up, don't call his name. But you know some parents, friends, they rule children and afraid of some, of some. Not me. I bring them here and will take them out. They have to earn their monies. Exactly. Exactly. Pearly, the way Fred Mitchell running his mouth, he's talking for the PLP too loose. He's always running on either with rubbish. Tell him, keep it up. Uh, maybe they're still editing it. It takes a long time sometimes to edit a video. <laughs> uh, this government has been pissing all over the Bahamian people from they came into the house. They don't think of nothing. They don't want to answer no questions whatsoever. Uh, Pearly, I'm making some security kit for so when they... When someone steals your car, they get electrocuted. I bet they would. Yeah, but see, then I don't want to stoop to that violence. But it's, it's getting ridiculous. Call Leon there. How you doing? Call Leon there, too. Brayman, how you doing? How you doing, my brother? You all right? Thank God for life. Well, you got to be. Thank God for life as well. Yeah, Amen. You all right? Because you to work. You work. I hear. I hear. And, you know, I always say any day above dirt, above earth, is a good day. It's a good day. It's a real. good day. No matter how much pain, you know, I got these, you know, feeling the... The effects of these knees at my age, but you know, every day. But, well, yeah, it, but uh, something can be done about your knees now. Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But if I, but if I don't feel the pain, feeling the pain make me know I'm alive. Yeah, but you want to be able to walk. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, pain, yeah. So make sure you do the right thing. Yeah, I'm doing that. I'm dealing with it. Let's get fussed out. You see, so in people just fuss me out this morning because they're supposed to go get a new brace for the knee, and I didn't get it. So, I, I, so you you just add into the fluid for me now. You know what? Take my number from the uh, producer when I finish talking to you, okay. and I give you, uh, I can give you a remedy for your knee. Okay. All right, Mister Producer. Okay. When I call, when I they hang up, take the right? number from him from me when I hang up. Up when we hang up. What you saying, Brayman? Talk to me. Uh, what I want to say, right? Uh huh. Uh, the nineteen. 60s, right? Yes. The uh, police force was run by Jamaicans and uh, Barbadians and Trinidadians right. and Guyanese, yeah. Right. For real. Now, yeah, I know. My, my, my father in law came as a Barbadian copier, yeah. Say that again? My father in law came to the Bahamas from Barbados as a police officer. Okay, yeah, they were running things. Mm. They were running things uh, uh, militant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, our, in those days, our people weren't educated as they are today. Point. They don't. They shouldn't want to try that thing today. But what I want to say, right? Some of them are trying it, are doing it. Uh, I've noticed, right? Uh, certain when certain people uh, that are on the police force, when they are called to do their work, yeah, because they are not real Bahamian. They even don't share. They slam, they slam down the phone on you. Right to Central, I'm speaking of. Brayman Darling, for instance, saying that. Okay. So I'm no, I know what I'm talking of. Okay. Uh, my point is, the thing is, government or governments should be more interested in cleaning up this country, immaterial of who, who am I, the people doing filthiness in this country, See what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand what you're trying to say. It's only 400,000 of us, just over 400,000 of us. And some, and within that number, a lot cannot vote. So I don't see why today we, this country, should be going through the foolishness in which we are going through by people with an authority not doing what they're supposed to do. Do your and job. Some of our Bahamian people, they so like, they, they so like, they will, they, they, they will go, they, they, will, they will, 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 will accept any old nastiness. And this would get me vexed with our people. You know, our people, and I, I'm, I'm speaking about the colored ones, okay? I'm speaking of, of, the, of the colored ones because I'm not experiencing any foolishness like what the, 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 uh, the colored ones 
uh, 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 heralding and, uh, you know, displaying. You see what I'm saying? Something needs to happen. Uh, something needs to happen. You know? You need to get our act is, together. We as a people need to get our act together. Yeah, the thing is, this is the same reason, and I can say it over the radio. Now, be careful. We got it. Say it again? Be very careful what you say now. You got to be here now. You can't be looking short on the radio that's now. the same reason why. No, we got to be, we got to be, we just got to make sure that we don't, we just be, we just got to be careful that we follow the rules. That's all Come I'm saying. On, the, the, the churches, the churches got to stand up. I, I, we got to be, got it. We got to, we got to be, yeah, get Brayman's Bre- 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 we can talk some more later. I, you got to be very careful. Boy, Brayman, <laughs> between you and Sparky, I don't know. Ah, boy. Let's see what this text says. Hey, Pearly, what's happening to Anton? The PLP muzzle is Maori. I asked him if the check bounced out today because I don't hear from him. But I'm sure he will call in one day. I'm sure he will call in one day when he, when he has more what he can say. Um, he can say in reference and he has more information. He did say that he's not going to be taught, he's not going to talk on foolishness. So, you know, if he, I guess if he doesn't agree with what's going on, he's not going to have much to say about it. I, I understand that. I understand that. But, you know, Oh, you know, it's one thing I, I promised to bring up today, and, and I'm sorry to jump from digress like this and, and jump from one thing, but I can bring this up every time I on the radio, every time I get opportunity. You don't need to fix these potholes in these roads. There's not a road in Nassau that doesn't have a pothole. There's a, on, on, Bay, on Bay Cedar Drive, just before you get to Seabreeze Lane, there is a trench in the middle of the road. When car hit that yesterday and broke their axle, well, I see the line of the axle, but I know the wheel was, was the wheel was like almost 90 degrees. That's ridiculous. Let's fix these potholes, man. What y'all doing? Playing dominoes all day? Too many potholes on this island. Too many roads get potholes. Just drive around. Go down East Street, fix all the potholes. Go down Market Street, go across the lake. Just drive around all day and fix the potholes. And fix them properly. We pay our taxes. We pay for licensing. To drive on the roads, at least we can't, don't have to be buying extra tires every other week. Bison tire, Brett messing up, messing up your rim. Come on, I fell for that person yesterday when I passed them and see that they they um the the wheel half break breaking half. I fell for them because that's money they gotta go find to fix their car because we can't fix the potholes in these roads. Every road in Nassau got a pothole, so you can't ask me well. Just drive on the road, you can see it. Text, call you on the air. How you doing? Forgive me. Pearly, Pearly, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Pearly, my brother. You know, it takes it takes persons such as ourselves to lend our voices to the nas to the airwaves, whether nationally or even uh, limited. You know, to, to to get what's going on in this country and bring it to the to to the attention of the Bahamian people. You know, we pay. The other day, I think it was your program where I stated that. With all the taxes we pay in licensing car vehicles and, and paying insurance and uh, uh, paying for inspections and so on and so forth, but yet the money is not as allocated specifically to maintaining our roadways. It, 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 it speaks volumes because everyone keeps on talking about the consolidated fund and the money goes in the consolidated fund and the money is not separated in the consolidated fund to be MR for certain things, which it is not, which is not true. The government does at times take monies in the consolidated fund and specifically put target them to do certain projects or whatever yeah. that they deem necessary. Yeah. So why is it that our monies cannot be diverted? These roads are atrocious. They're terrible. I mean, there was, there was a time up, even as simple as Cable Beach. I don't know if you remember last year sometime a pothole was in the roadway at Cable Beach, which, which I worked for well over 34 years, and never in my life have I seen a pothole on the main thoroughfare of Cable Beach. That's why I so tell you there's not a road in this island that I'm a pothole. Okay, so that, that hole that you're talking about, uh, Bay Lily Drive, turning into... They see the they see the drive on in Seabreeze just before you get to Seabreeze Lane. Exactly that hole. I've been watching that hole now for almost two weeks. Yes, and I can tell you all what's happening right now. Even with the recent rain, that hole expands. It's getting bigger and deeper. But these, it seems as if these persons in the ministry obviously does do not drive these roads. I no. Think. Obviously, they in helicopters or something. But because a certain minister lives on a road, and a certain ministers drive past that. I saw a minister seeing that. Okay. So, in essence, then what we are saying is, 
a lot of these things that we are making mention, we are not complaining about them. We are bringing it to the attention. I'm being very diplomatic. Yeah, yeah we are bringing it to the attention to be fixed. Yeah, we, when it gets the time, you're tired. We're bringing it to the attention of the relevant authorities. Get your work crews out on these roads and repair these roads. Yes. Just the other day, I'll close on this one. I, I'm passing through Balfour Avenue, a side corner that is high, hardly traveled. They are paving that road. They scraped that road up, and they're paving that road. But the main <laughs> thoroughfares like Mackey Street. Yeah. I talked about Hawkins Hill the other day, which is atrocious. Yes. In front of the Ministry of Immigration. Yes. It is atrocious. And they would not get on these main roads and fix these roads. It's hard enough maintaining your vehicle with tires and rims and tie rod ends yes. and your front suspension yes. and so on and so forth, your, your, your CV joints and stuff. And these people appear not to care. Fix this country. That's all we're asking That's for. That's all. Let's fix the, you pay your taxes, fix the road. Thank you. Call you on there. How you doing? Yes, sir. Pearly, how you doing? Challenge Johnson. Hey, brother. Yep. See you, you, you can't, you, you can't relate to what I talking about because you, you driving good road in Freeport, so I, I, you know. Yeah, but what happens is our road are reaching the point that we are going to change. This is part of the economic conversation we have. Yes. We initially, you question you have to ask yourself, right? No major paving has been done in Grand Bahama for fifty years. Yes. Wow. Our roads are fifty are superior to yours. So it tells you the capability of what can be done. Yes. Now, re remember the same thing. Roads in the U.S. when paved is designed for almost 50 to 100 years. Yeah. Why is it that ours need to be redone every five years? That's so the question. You know what it is, right? Is, is, the, is, uh, the, is, is the poor quality of the tar to begin yeah, with? Called, no, it's called plan obstinance. Yes. So you plan for something to fail at a particular time, kind of like how they designed the iPhone to fail every year so you could buy the new one. Buy a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so, <laughs> that's where it is. But, Pearly, just to be first, on, on the power company, right? Uh -huh. I'm calling on the government of the Bahamas to do a simple thing. Right now, you under $300 is where you pay no VAT on your light bill. Right. Right? Yeah. But if the, if the fees go up or the person uses a bit of energy, and let's say it was at two ninety five, Yeah. They use, they use $10 more worth of electricity. They are penalized with a 10% of their total bill. Yes. So you got from two ninety five no VAT to, to three hundred and five, you now pay thirty dollars and fifty cents. So the government of the Bahamas can make a simple policy decision today without going back into the in, in, going back into Parliament since their uh, energy yeah. policy fail. Yeah. Just change to say the first no VAT on the first three hundred dollars. They could even say no VAT on the first three hundred dollars of business accounts, just you know, because the government could segment. That's the taxation is. They have the right to segment tax, tax taxation. So just do that, and immediately, behemoths who are now light bills are just jump from the two hundred to the three hundred range, is not hit with that ten percent, uh, that ten percent penalty. And that is that is out of right. So, but but one of the greatest things that we have failed to do, the more in the last decades, more specifically, this administration. Dismal failure. I, I would challenge any intelligent contradiction to what I'm saying. But what happened is happened though is that the the world has changed since uh, since COVID, and this administration is brags about taking over since COVID and turning the economy around, but we have not had the growth to match it. There's a need for reform of our economics in our country, and okay. the two major points in this is banking and financial services and Tourism and hospitality, these are two pillars of economy. Yes. Let me just go first to banking. Now, when you look at banking and the fact that we've had the same system in banking for, from since uh, uh, Wallace Groves came to the Bahamas. Okay. Now, let, me, let me surprise a lot of people. Wallace Grove was the American corn man who pioneered, who pioneered uh, offshore finance. And he created the global uh, plutocracy. A lot of people may not know that. Right here from this small island called Freeport. That's why I always say this. There's something called the Grand Deception that some people don't know about Freeport. But I'm going to have that conversation one day. Okay. But, but the point I make is that when Mr. Pintard said that we need a reform in banking, it's not simply about service fees. I am, I, I, you can be rest assured he's talking about the need for total reform of this economy. Banking today, and just use one, let me use one instance of banking. Uh, we know about real world assets. Yeah. Today, 
that is worth $50 billion a year. B, uh, BGC, Kingsley, McKinsey, McKinsey and about other people has estimated by 2030, in five years, uh-huh. it will be worth between 3 and $30 trillion, depending on who you listen to. Okay. That is what the dare bill is supposed to attack. But the problem is that who did the dare bills don't understand. I am rest assured that the next administration does. Because you're talking about introducing FinTech, RegTech, SoupTech, PropTech, InsurTech, and TradeFi. These are financial technology, regulatory technology, yes, supervisory yeah. technology, property yes. technology, insurance technology. Yes. That's what the world is moving to. It can transform adding billions a year to our local economy and letting some people at a lower level to enter the market. We talk about banking, oh, the humans own bank. Guess what? Under FinTech and, and these other things, demand in Bain's time could own a bank, even if you only got a 1,000 customers somewhere in the Bahamas in the world. So these are the things you have to talk about. Okay. But now let's just quickly jump to tourism. On Grand Bahama, it's said that we need between 14 and 20,000 bed and breakfast. In Abaco, it's said that you need about 12,000 bed and breakfast or short-term rentals. Uh-huh. In New Providence, it says that the room su- support is insufficient, yes. in spite of these things coming online. Why is it yet that we've had we have not had a new destination strategy? That's because, the question. You're right, but see, because what happens is those who have governed in the past, right up to today, at uh, five o'clock, is cemented in the past and denied for the future. This is why we need to make preparations for the new administration that is coming in, who understands and will embrace the future tech, because those same fintech. And, uh, and, and property tech allows behemoths to access global capital to build their uh, bed and breakfasts and, and uh, event management support and everything okay. based on the overarching destination strategy and that we, is revealed by government. And we, do we need so, to, because Jamaica building more hotel rooms, Turks Island building more hotel rooms, but we're not. Right. Right. And so imagine this, though. We need just, just take it at, at 60,000 across the Bahamas. Uh-huh. Simply where FinTech, re- re- reform of the, of, the, of the banking industry and financial service industry, and I won't even go into the details of what we do now, the trillion dollars that passed, a total of $13 trillion in regular money and $12 trillion in personal money. That's, these are not things I'm guessing. This is that out there for people who want to search. When you just look now, though, that you, that, uh, that you put on a bill of fourplex, you need a million dollars. Mm. You could use FinTech and these other different things to go to the market, find 100 people to give you 10 grand or 1,000 people to give you 1,000 or whatever combination it is. Yeah, yeah. Because you're protected digitally, you're protected by property tax and things. So now you have a marketplace where you have a place that such quality you could get $1,500 a month per room. Right? That's 50 rooms per, that's 52 rooms per place. You just read it off to say, and each section of those, you get 312000 per unit, times that by four, $1.2 million a year. Yeah. So essentially, you are making the money necessary to make that $10,000 a month payment plus support it. And, 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 and you would now you own the industry. And now when you start building these rooms, you, need, you now need support systems. You need restaurants. You need transportation. You need activities. You yeah. need all of these different and things. That's all that's- but these required visionary leadership. Yes. And so I and I'm telling Bahamians, if you haven't done anything else and you've moved, please go and update your voters registration, which is another thing I'm gonna call it another day for because we should be on digitized voting by now. Yeah. Update your registration, get five other people to go to vote for you. You will have the opportunity to get an inspiration that you need so that you can find your purpose, develop your passion, and I can tell you the most important thing. Bahamians under the next income and FNM administration, you will be able to dream again. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Siala. Tech says, Pearly, every road got potholes. You can't drive for two minutes without dropping in some kind of hole. They patch it, but as soon as the rain falls, the holes are back. That hole in Bay Cedar had a, a red cone in it. You could barely see the top of the red cone. I think that sink. I think the red cone, they're probably in China right now. MOW, too busy making TikToks. Um... Boy, these roads, um, pretty, they just pave hard road, and you could tell them, tell we have zero standards for things. We do, we do the road have more inconsistencies. 
And Blue Road South heading past Commonwealth Bank by Super Value Golden Gates is the worst road on this island. Please pave it ASAP. And the last text is saying, Apparently that guy makes a lot of sense, but you need to cut down to two minutes. He talks, uh, racks up other people's time. I apologize for that, but he does make a lot of sense. Thank you so much for all the calls, the texts and all that. When we get back after the news, we're going to talk some sports. This is Talking Heads Thursday with Pearly in the house, Guiding Radio 96.9 FM. I'll see you right after the news break. And I've been gone too long, and I'm hoping that you sing my song, my song. Living with a neurological condition shouldn't define you. At Cleveland Clinic in Florida, we do whatever it takes to make life better today while discovering new treatments for a brighter tomorrow. From epilepsy management to specialized spine care and brain tumor surgery, we're delivering world-class neurology care for the day-to-day, for the days you live for, for every care in the world. Visit clevelandclinicflorida.org. Slash Caribbean. Bucket together, come if we book it together. Hey, book it together, come if we book it together. We are book it together when everybody out. Fried chicken, we are free. Bucket for the crow. Share a bucket together, everybody go live. Crispy original when we're online. Book it together and do the new dance craze. Pot AFC Summer Bucket Deals. Eight pieces of your favorite fried chicken and four buttery biscuits with options to add family fries, a two-liter switcher, and four pineapple biscuits starting at $20. KFC, it's finger licking good. With fine style with elegant taste, then fine threads is your place. If you want those slots hemmed or just taking the waist, then fine threads is your place. If you want to look suave and never near everywhere you go, like you're supposed to be in a video. Want to step out and look great? Then Fine Threads is your place. With fine style, with elegant taste. Then Fine Threads is your place. Is your place. Is your place. The Grand Bahama News is available every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. You can buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, DeGregory's Fine Foods, and Bellevue Gifts. Now is the time to reach your Grand Bahama market with affordable packages, including print and digital. Call GB News Sales Representative Kavandre at 822-6717 or message him on WhatsApp for ad rates. Classified ads are now available every Tuesday as well. Keep up with everything Grand Bahamian every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. Feeling lucky? Here's Cuban Willie's numerology report. Brought to you by the Island Game. Buenos dias, soy Joe Cuban Willie, and it's Thursday. Time for my numerology report with the Cuatro Pelotas for you today. All brought to you, of course, by the Island Game. And today's lucky number in the four ball. Two, two, eight, eight, dos, dos, ocho, ocho. The 22, 88. That's your football today. Play it and win with the Island Games. Stay winning, my friends. We're going to give you a check every week for a year. Percy Fenty Plan. Island Games keep you winning. Percy Fenty Plan. Dream big, we will help you live it. Percy Fenty Plan. Island Games, we got you. Percy Fenty Plan. From the friends you can trust. If winning is a must, go play the game you know. Because your best chance is with us. The most trustworthy name is... Percy's Island Games, so put 20 on your account and ride this easy train at Percy's Island Games. You're listening to Talking Heads with Naughty, hosted by Earl the Pearl, on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Talking Heads with Naughty is brought to you by Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Eddie Minnis Live, Fine Threads, First Caribbean Bank, Janae's Uniform Center, John's Department Store, Jerkus Wild, KFC, Naughty Johnny's, Percy Sands Games, Prince Masters, and Tropical Gyros. <laughs> A very, very good afternoon. Welcome back to Talking Heads Thursdays. This Pearly in the house. Sports time. We got some special guests. This crew ain't been with us for a little while, but before we get into them, let's get some homework done. 
323-6232-325-4316-325-4259-242-300-5720. The text line is 4224796. That is powered by BTC. But let's get right into it, because if I don't do this, you know Jeff can be texting me right away. Today in Sports History, brought to you by Naughty Johnny. Today is Thursday, August 22nd, 2024. In, oh, in 1950, Althea Gibson became the first black tennis player to be accepted into the national competition. <clears throat> in 1951, 75,052 people, see, I could read numbers, 75,052 people watched the Harlem Globetrotters perform. It was the largest crowd to see a basketball game. In 1972, due to its racial policies, Rhodesia was asked to withdraw from the 20th Olympic Summer Games. In 1989, Nolan Ryan became the first major league pitcher to strike out 5,000 batters. In 2001, Brett Hull signed a two-year deal for $9 million with the Detroit Red Wings. And in 2003, Albert Pujols, St. Louis Cardinals, went 0-5 for 5 to end a 30-game hitting streak. And the sports quote of the day, to succeed, you need to find something to hold on to, something to motivate you, and something to inspire you. Tony Dorsett, that great Dallas cowboy. <clears throat> Tony Dorsett, that great Dallas boy. Oh, boy. Anyway, let's get into the homes. Let's get into the home. The home. What's going on? <laughs> Not even be talking about his cowboys like that. I can get you help for that. Let's see what's going on in the sports. Brought to you by Burger King. Cartwright team, Doomsday Shine in Maryland. Team finishes fourth at U.S. Team Racing Championship. That's what I'm talking about. Men's bracket release for the B4A. Bahamian Surfer reflects on performance at Vir Virginia Beach Pro. Bahamian Surfer? Wow. Okay, that's cool. That is so super. Let me tell you something. This little country, any sport and every sport that we participate in, we do well in. We are that athletic in this country, the Bahamian surfing. We got Bahamian surfing. We got them playing polo. We got our water polo. We got them doing uh, um, riding horses, equestrians. We got them road racing. And we got them playing flag football, which I heard is going to be an Olympic sport in 2028. And my own, see, I even, I, they've been gone so long, I play, like, I don't even know the name. I ain't seen him in so long. Now, the good brother, I he all right with me because he's been consistent. But certain people, certain people. Miss Muffy, how are you, darling? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Introduce yourself, son. I, 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 <laughs> Jason Clark, Bahamas Youth Fly Football <laughs> League. And you are, madam? Alexandra Deal, also known as Muffy with the BYFFL. Yes, and Muffy, doctors, when they, they throw the team ran away and did all kind of thing and did well, and I see her. Before they ran away, I see her because she was... Focusing on something else. My son. Well, and that's good. That's yeah. Good. So he plays baseball as well as flag football. Okay. And baseball kind of took, um, I, I wouldn't say priority, but because no, but he's, that, a, he's my baby. Yeah, so he's I only eight. That is. So but I you really don't explain it to me too much. And yeah. I just was giving you evidence. I mean, she's getting all like. Personal. You know, <laughs> she fixed her hair and everything for me today. I feel mm -hmm. special. <laughs> So what's happening? We ready for a new season? Oh, we're ready. We are so ready. Next week, Saturday. Next week, Saturday. August the 31st. That's it. August 2024. Mm -hmm. How many teams you have in each division now? This well, year? We haven't, so put them, we haven't put them into divisions as yet. Well, I uh, mean, because different age groups. you Different right? age groups, yeah, yes. So we, haven't, we haven't broken them out as yet. And, okay. and generally how we do it is that we'll have, of course, registrations next week on the 31st. And then uh, we will do the whole, like we normally would, four to six weeks of football training with them. So if you're okay. new or not or whatever the case, you still get that introductory into the actual game. And then, of course, we will have our draft system, which we implemented I was last, ask that. Okay. last season, which was very funny and, and, and very comical. Okay. We just hope Coach Allen has his act together this time and they pays attention during up. the training. Well, Coach uh, Allen had kids playing and he didn't get to draft his own kids, did he? Yeah, well, the thing was, he was not paying attention during the assessment. <laughs> so we, we keep the team, the kids and their teams from the year before and okay. what have you. But the new kids, who you can all, who all the coaches will view during the four to six weeks assessment, skills okay. assessment, you have a chance. So when it comes to draft day, you should already know who's your number one, number two, number three pick. Like I'm preparing for my fantasy league team. Exactly. Next week, right? But unfortunately, who I go in Coach Allen wasn't doing his homework uh, and he was, he was taking very long for, with his picks and all the coaches were not happy with him in that. And then he still <laughs> didn't pick, he didn't make some good choices. How does this team do? Uh, I don't think they did too good either. They didn't. <laughs> 
But oh, nonetheless, I will be listening because no, he nonetheless, cuts his thing. He, he had a challenge last year. Uh, he was challenged. He normally has top top ranked teams uh, in that regard. So okay. after the first four to six weeks, we'll put him in the teams. We know exactly what's happening, and I'm sure we'll be back uh, somewhere around there to just give an update in terms of what's happening with the season. You know, but definitely by far we expect this to be our biggest season so, ever. Let me. I, I gonna get. I got my ninety questions. Let's get the first one. So if I played for a team last year. I have to play again for the team this year, or can I become a free agent? You are staying no. in your team. So there are no free agents. You're around no. there playing, no trade, no trading. No, 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 no trading. Trade. And the only, even though I think Alan negotiated a trade somehow last year, but anyway, mm -hmm. um, the only way you would really be on a different team the year after is if you're actually changing age brackets. Age brackets, groups. okay. Yeah, and then okay. you will then become a free agent in that group, and, and you will be in the draft as well. So, so I can be a top-tier player in the 6 to 9, let's say, group and what have you, and I'm going into 10 to 13, uh, you know, and I, you ain't I, picking which team you're waiting to be drafted because you, you ain't going to go stock no team yep. because I know if you let them stock some teams to be powerhouses. Yep. Yep. You'll wait to be drafted. So if I want, if I have a child, what, first of all, what age, what's the youngest age, oldest age? Give me the age groups, the age brackets. Oh, anyone from ages 6 to 18, but the brackets go from uh, 6 to 9, 10 to 13, 14 to 17. 6 to 9, 10 to 13, 14 to 17. Yes. If I want to play, how do I sign up? Where do I go? When are you having people sign up? Um, give me those details. Sure. So we have an online registration form, basically. Okay. Um, and what anybody who's listening would actually have to go onto our Facebook page to get the link. And then they would be signing up on the Team Snap link. Once they've registered online... Obviously, that we also can take payments. Uh, you can do bank transfer for payments and or on the day of. And how much is it again? It's 200 for the registration. Of it, a team or per player? For each, yeah, per player. $200 so per it's player. $200. It'll, this year, it's going to come with the uniform. Well, for new players, it'll come for the uniform. It will also have sports, like insurance. The sportsman cover sports insurance. Co yeah. Insurance. Yeah, okay, so that's insurance year. and uniform. Registration right. and your flag belt and, and your flag belt. And the season runs from August thirty first to December seventh. So we got uh, August to September, October. Yeah. So three solid months. Yeah. Three solid months. Yeah. Of activities every Saturday. Every Saturday. Where work, do you play? Every work, work, works at about eight dollars a day. So okay. You know, <laughs> okay. So you know, and then you know, everybody. Try, you know, you gotta make this. You gotta be able to finance the league and and keep it going and keep yes. the quality. Yeah. Uh, uh, what this league has been Yeah, because we, we do rent a facility and then, you know. Where, where do you play? We play at the grass fields just outside the original Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. So okay. where the original Thomas A. Robinson entrance is for the track, it's right on the opposite side of so the track. So you just drive right around. Just and you, drive and right around right, the service right, road, right, right on the right-hand side. It road. runs parallel you can to actually Thompson, see us right, Thompson yes. Boulevard. Mm -hmm. You can see us right from Thompson Boulevard. From the main road, you can actually see us. Is there uh, on-site registration on the 31st? We will have on-site registration. It will still be technically mm -hmm. through our online registration, but our administration team yep. will have um, a device out there the to, little be able wi set up and everything. to be able to do the registration on-site. But we're really trying to encourage everyone to do this prior to, because it obviously slows down the whole yeah, process so of get the day. It done early. So getting it done ahead of time is Give us the better. website again. I can ask you that two more times for this. It's on our Facebook page, and obviously our Facebook page is Bahamas Youth Flag Football League. So Bahamas you, Youth Flag Football League yeah. Facebook page. And the it, link is on that. And, and flag football is growing by leaps and bounds, and by leaps and bounds around the world. Um, we know it's going to be a part of the 2020 Olympic, uh, Olympics, along with baseball. Yeah, I gotta say, put that in there. <laughs> um, so, so you know, I'm just saying this. So, when in case Murphy's son, can, you know, go in, it's no excuse. You're going for we got flag football and baseball in the Olympics next year. Mm -hmm. Maybe major league and stuff. Um, and some people are talking. Some NFL players may be playing flag football. I don't know how that's going to work out. So, I guess we'll see over the next couple of years. We'll see. But you expect? Do you how big a growth are you expecting this year? And have you been? Have people been registering already? Has yeah. has the response yeah. been yeah. so far? The response has been looking? pretty good. The response has been pretty good. But you know, like our normal Bahamians, um, um, we we like the last minute. Yeah, you know, next week is usually when we get our heavy rush of everybody trying to get things done. But the response has been really, really good. I think the big win for us this year, and I think Muffy would have said it a little earlier this week in another interview she would have done, uh, is really been the the infusion of the high school teams who were participating in the high school tournament. Into that's the one that's the actual season. Sack, sack, 
Okay. Yeah. 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 Zach did pretty well last year. They won both divisions. I, no, that's right. I wasn't sure. I just wanted to make yeah, sure that. Sure. And do you know what? <laughs> we still have school clothes before we could have given them a trophy, so they will be getting them at the beginning of the school. Yeah, okay, so, okay. Yeah. I if get you it. want, we can actually, we should have brought them here to you to actually. I would have been happy to deliver them. <laughs> that would have been no problem. <laughs> I said, saw the principal last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, that's a good thought. Maybe next time we come, we'll bring them to you. Yeah, they're battling right now. You know, everybody battling against school zones, yes. I guess. Yeah. Yes. I mean, she was like, she ain't pleasant to talk to. <laughs> oh, Lord. They try, but I mean, that's part of it. You know, they're trying yep. to get, and, and sure. And thank God for them in QC, because those BGCS, anyway, anyway, we'll talk about that. Mm-hmm. So, how many teams did you have last year, and did you expect to have one or two extra teams, or just yes. the same team? So, last year, in our 6-9 to nine division, we had three teams. Right. In our 10-13, to 13, we had five, and in our 14-17, to 17, we had th- four, actually, four. Okay. Four. This year... So we do have, like Jason was mentioning, that we do have some of the high school tournament teams, right? Some of the schools that were participating in the high school tournament, they're going to integrate into our season this year, meaning their entire team will come. They'll still do the training at the beginning. And then when we break out into teams, they will stay as their own team. So we will have our own our kids, let's say we had five in the 10 to 13 last year, we'll still have those same five teams. And then we would have also, let's say, I'm just going to say random schools right now. I'm not actually mentioning the schools that are participating. Just say high school A, so you don't call the okay, wrong high sure. school name. High school A and high school B, which okay. would mean that in that division, we will actually now have seven teams rather than five. But let me ask you this question. I know some... Kids who played in the high school tournament already on teams in flag football. So now, how does that affect them? They will have to stay. Anybody that's currently in our league will stay in our league, meaning they'll stay on their teams. So, so, so high school teams would probably lose a couple of players. Yeah, because I don't. Well, it's not going to be all. We really only have at this point, I think, two, maybe three, and they, those kids that are or that those schools that are actually going to be coming and integrating, they actually don't have kids right. on they're like our. New. Okay, so okay. they're more saying, new yeah. and they're not and they're not already on any of our teams. Okay, so, but what cool. it's going to really do for them is it's going to let their teams kind of develop before our high school tournament starts again. Right, okay. so it gives them a little bit more. It'll actually assist the school itself more on helping the kids get a little bit more developed in the sport, so that when high school season, high school tournament comes around, Does SAC it. can't sit there and just you know all of our elite players that we train that are representing. They won't be now beating up on these other teams. Hopefully, it would make you think that can change anything. See. <sighs> This is the same thing they thought about the U.S. Olympic basketball team that they because they have, they they gonna beat just as bad now <laughs> because now what you're gonna have is the more seasoned players gonna have a lot more practice so they'll be all right it'll, it'll probably be a little more competitive it'll be a little bit more competitive which will make it more fun yeah there's still those now mind Nobody you now the the the, 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 win, 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 the win. big benefit too though is that to really help develop those high schools because generally uh, what will happen too is just so happens that SAC has a good number of kids in our program yes. even before the high school tournament came around yes. so that gives them a good you know dominating force yes. but now these other schools they will now be getting the same level of reps those SAC kids are getting right. and playing together because all the SAC kids don't play on the same team no, we in know the that. league we know that. so you know they get time to build the chemistries work on their plays and actually get more reps playing games which they do not get the only time the high school teams really got to play was during their the preparation yeah. Uh, yeah, for there's the one tournament. thing they all lack with SAC kids up though heart Boy, I tell you. I won't comment on that. <laughs> yeah, we do. Last, the last track and field championship, they weren't expected to win. They thought out of schools, it was all so powerful, but hard. It's, you know, pride. No? No? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, <laughs> I want to thank you. So, so ne- I mean, you'll be back next week and I'll update yes, as well. Yes. And then you'll come back as often as possible update yes. it. So, let's, let's plan this now. We have the... the, the the draft is the draft on the thirty first or for the no down? the draft no, no. will be a, a couple of weeks after so probably five weeks okay so early in o- probably early October yeah. so what we'll do is we'll talk some more about what's going on update this what's happening once we get the sure. draft then we bring some players in so they could brag again to each other <laughs> and on anything any- you know what you need to we need to bring in we need to bring our coaches so they could sit here and brag because you know while the kids compete the coaches. You know, they're worried. They're sitting there doing their own trash talk in uh, uh-huh. amongst themselves about how good my team is and who I got. No, you don't have him, and you know, you you well, need. Let's hands. do that. Let's, let's so, get a call. You know, because I can jinx them now. It would be nice and exciting. You to know, have I can them. jinx them. <laughs> 
Just tell them don't bring no football, no bat. And they're hiding them. their they're hiding their list, and they're not saying anything during the the practice. So the, during the practicing time when we're doing all of our drills, uh-huh. they're not talking to each other about nothing. They just watching and they, taking notes. Yeah, they're making sure that no one knows who they want to pick, so that the other person doesn't pick before them. Except, except, wow. except Coach Allen. <laughs> he just, just brags and make not- No, I think Coach I think Coach Allen. Uh, I, well, he's doing some. He's an entrepreneur, but he was doing some stuff last year, so I think he missed a couple of things. Okay. Thought he had a couple of picks which were stolen from him, <laughs> and so it kind of left him a little off balance. He you wasn't know paying I mean? attention. Yeah, yeah, you know, and so the other guy, the guys took advantage of it last year, you know. Yeah. But he'll be, I'm sure he'll be more prepared this year. Oh, I'm pretty certain. After the licking he got last year, I think he will. And he's like I said, and he's 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 not good at losing, and he's not used to losing. <laughs> so he's a, he's a soccer. <laughs> No, Allen's not not a soccer. No, you know, but he's definitely a winner. Okay, you know. And so, any new rules to be looking for in, in, in this year? Any changes to the rules? Any? Um, There's no major changes to the rules. Um, there is one rule that we saw. I think that was implemented in one of the tournaments we entered, uh, which was basically um, uh, you would have the option. Uh, at midfield, like when you got the four chances to go, uh-huh. uh, they made a shift. Um, that if you chose to go for it on, for, no, I'm trying to remember what the rule was, but there was, there was, there was, sorry, my apologies. It was around the penalties. Okay. Mm-hmm. Any penalty on the offense is an automatic loss of down. Any penalty on the defense is an automatic first down. Uh, and that was one rule I saw kind of shifted, but we'll have to just double check for the tournaments we're going to be going to in October okay. and January. If both of those rules so would be up. There's a new tournament in October because I know it's usually December, January. You go to Texas. That's 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 nationals, right. which is the climax. But we normally do go to one like September, yes. October. It's a, it's a regional one yes. in Florida. I think you go. Yes, to. Yes. yes, I remember. Mind you, they have them every month. They have several each month. Like but different we go, areas. Different so. areas, but we tend to go to the ones that are closer home uh-huh. for us from a costing perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And this gives the kids the exposure. Give them, them the exposure. Gives them qualifying points as well. Like for instance, when we would have won that one about two years. Years ago, uh, in in Tampa, uh, when we kind of went into nationals at the end of the year, you kind of get points towards that, right? Okay. They qualify. As towards nationals. You will tend, yeah, when they kind of match up. So higher teams, ranking. You, you have yes. a higher ranking. You tend to play the uh, lower ranked team in the earlier round, so it's easier on day two. You you have an easier day one going into day two. Okay. Those guys have a harder day one, and so when they then see the teams. Uh, you know, they got to fight a little harder to kind of get up there. So it, it helps with your ranking when you kind of attend those qualifiers. So you have a text to send a message. Only new rules this year is Jess beat Sock. <laughs> wow. I agree wow. on that one. <laughs> Such haters. Right? Well, so, I like that one. So one more time, if you want to register, you can go to the Bahamas Youth Football Flag, your Bahamas Youth Flag Football Facebook page. Yes. And, and our hit link, the link. And our and link is And you can register the team. It's $200, which covers insurance, uniform for the new players, um, the belt. The flag belt. The flag yeah. belt and whatever needed for the... For the for the for the for the league to go through. Yes. yes. And right. The only other message we want to send to any parent who's going to be signing up for this year is that you'll notice it's extremely hot. Yes. We encourage lots of hydration. Uh, we do sell water and Gatorade and stuff on site, but the idea really is make sure they are well hydrated. I mean, yeah. we do take breaks. You know, it's like almost in 20, 20 minute intervals. Okay. How we train because it's extremely hot. But, I know. But just making sure uh, people are aware. You know, uh, um, we run a very very tight tight program, and so. Uh, and I want, to tell, want to tell the listening audience, this flag football is growing very fast around the world. Extremely. We have a lot of fast, we have a lot of fast kids in this country, a lot mm-hmm. of talented kids that do well. They've done well in these tournaments. It's a great thing to get them. If you want, if you, you know, you want to get them out of playing other things, this is a great sport to get them into. Um, Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Let's come down. Um, you can sign up online. Flag, Bahamas flag football. That's it. Bahamas, Bahamas youth flag, flag football. Flag. I know it's uh, something else. Bahamas youth flag football Facebook page. Sign up. Um, participate. It's going to be fun. And, and probably if I can put in just one quick plug, because I think sure, we, we didn't emphasize it enough. It's boys and girls. And for those of you who are not aware, with the females, when the females score or are involved in a scoring play, it's more points. So a guy yes. scores six points. A female scores no, no, eight no, points. Come on, man. You can give and, a woman more points. And, than, and, see, they've got an advantage on us now. And guys. when you go for an extra point, you go for one, and a guy gets it, it's one. No, a female gets it, it's two. You go for two, it's a guy, it's two. With a female, it's three. So it almost so, makes sense to have a secret weapon. Listen, you bet right. Team. So that's bet what right. a lot of the coaches do. But I was going to say, my son was very upset with me. Um, 
He's like, I thought we, I thought women are trying to get equal rights, mommy. Oh, uh-huh, there like, you go. How come, she, how come she gets more points than me? I thought we're playing together, so we should all get the same amount of points. I was like, oh my poor. See, that's good mind. See, you know, you know, we're talking. They're not taking advantage of us, but that's all right. I mean, that's fine. That's, it's a way to get more females in, involved in that's, the sport. Yes. I think that's so. The hopefully, you involved, and it's a lot more opportunities for the females as well. Is uh, it? Is is it? And let me ask this last question. Is it you playing the boys and girls together because you don't have enough females? So eventually, you hope to have enough females to have a separate females than ma- males, or are you can always have them integrated. We will probably always have them integrated. Yeah. If, it becomes, if it comes to the point where we have that many females that we can't get them spread on the team, then we will just go exclusively female. But I'll tell you, we have females on our traveling teams. No, I know, I met, I met a couple very of Very high level. No, so, I met a couple yeah. of them very fast. Yeah. 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 yeah, and very good. Good hands, good football IQ, and what have you. So See, when you go to the tournaments, though, they have. Boys, boys and boys, like just all boys. They have girls with playing girls, and they have co-ed. co-ed. co-ed okay. So we always go as co-ed. Okay. And so even in our league here, I mean, it's. I think it's good to always integrate the girls and the guys together. Um, it'll obviously help the girls play yeah. better um, because then now that you know the type of competition or whatever, yeah, but it, it also gives the boys, I think, a little bit. Sometimes the boys look at the girls and. Some of the girls are better than the boys, so it kind of makes them look up like, oh, okay, she can't get, she's not getting that ball. Let me get this. So it kind of pushes them as well. Okay, and then when the girl beat you, plus you probably you might see when you like your impression. Anyway, try to play better too. <laughs> I had to bring that up. Anyway, guys, we're gonna take our first break, but I want to thank you guys for coming. I look forward to seeing you again next Thursday. Yes, thank the you. Update is on what's going on. I'll be here. And it's always a joy to have you to talk about it. And you know, I got, I had a call the other day. Said we don't talk enough about local sports. So there you have it. We got. The one of my favorite set because you've been with me for my first game and we can always be with me. <laughs> Take that, naughty. But bah- Bahamas flag, Bahamas youth you flag football. Facebook page, sign up. We can see you again next week. Thanks for coming. All we can right. take our first break when we come back. We can talk a little bit about some football and we get into our picks and we have an interesting uh, final 15. This is Pearly Talking Heads Thursdays, Guardian Radio 96 by 9 FM. We'll be right back. We can trace that. Baby, if you with me, better do right And I've been gone too long And I'm hoping that you sing my song Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope Creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast Providing more of what you need More locations means more care closer to home More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. Put your best foot forward this school year by shopping at John's for your back-to-school footwear needs from toddlers to college students. Have your child looking smart in a pair of Skechers, Nikes, Hush Puppies, Sperry Brand Styles, and many more. John's collection of durable and sharp styles will have your child stepping with confidence all year round. Need socks and a belt? John's has got you. And don't forget our new Spray Ground or J-World backpack and lunch containers too. You can find all this and more with the best prices and customer service in town at John's on Rosetta Street and Carmichael Road. We are bucket together when everybody out. Yeah. Fried chicken, we are free. Bucket for the crow. Share a bucket together, everybody go live. Ooh. Crispy original when we're online. Bucket together and do the new dance craze. Hot AFC Summer Bucket Deals. Eight pieces of your favorite fried chicken and four buttery biscuits with options to add family fries, a two liter switcher, and four pineapple biscuits starting at $20. KFC, it's finger licking good. Nassau, Nassau. get ready Nassau. for a night you simply won't want to miss. For the first time in over 40 years. Experience an eve with Amphitheater Nassau Cruise Port on Saturday, October 5th. Tickets are on sale now. Go to BahamasETickets.com or go to the Nassau Cruise Port box office located in the Junkanoo Museum. Joining Eddie on stage, Fran Sean, Gino D, Iris Stoll, and Tingham. An evening with Eddie Minutes live at the Amphitheater Nassau Cruise Port, Saturday, October 5th. Get your tickets now. You're listening to Talking Heads with Naughty, hosted by Earl the Pearl. On Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. These rows of flames are catching a fire. 
I, I, start, I don't, with producer, I started to sing this now, but I figure I don't want my, my uh, listeners to hang up on me because one thing I can't do is carry a tune. So, football. And then we get into the picks. Um, but there was something I see happening, and I, I got to touch on this, on those Pittsburgh Steelers. They have, they're going to have a, con- a football controversy. They're going to, because Justin Fields has started making, making a case to make himself QB1. Even though he's not been consistent, you see the brilliance. He's been like, he, like more peaks and valleys. He, he, he'll do well, then he'll drop. He'll do well, then he'll drop. But Russell Wilson just haven't been, hasn't been consistent at all. He has not been consistent at all. And I just think it's gonna, that's going to develop in something very interesting. I think you're going to see. I still believe that Russell will be the day one starting quarterback. But I don't know how that long that can last. I don't know how long that can last. I see the Carolina Panthers uh, traded um, cornerback Michael Jackson for rookie linebacker Michael Barrett. You don't usually see you don't usually see NFL teams trade for other players so much like back two players like that usually for picks. So that's going to be interesting to see um, the corner. Ah, boy, we see how that come up. Um, I see um, Joanne Dotson, the Phillies acquired Washington wide receiver in the fifth round, fifth rounder uh, for 2025 third and two seven rounders. See that that um, so I guess I, boy, some moves making, some moves are making. I see my Dolphins haven't really done anything. You have so many injuries; they just been signing a lot of people just to make up the numbers uh, for the final preseason game. Now you do know that most training camps will close down today, or between the day and by the weekend. But most all the training camps will close. Um, they'll all play the final preseason game this weekend, cut down day to 53 man rosters on Tuesday, and then they'll get into the, uh, forming those teams and like that. So right now the press is cut out from most of the, the camps because there's nothing to talk about, and everybody is in an uh, is sitting there waiting to see who will make the team. Will there be surprise cuts? Will there be some surprise, um, some people staying on? Um, so that, that's going to be exciting over the next few days for football. And that's just taking us to be only one step closer to kick off. One step closer. I see A.J. Terrell gets an $81 million deal from the Falcons. A four-year deal includes a $65 million guaranteed money. That's good for the Falcons. I see the Commanders made a trade. Uh, Cade York is headed to the Washington Commanders for conditional seven-round picks. So I guess that figures how well he does. Um, this is, I think this is, oh, I see the Cowboys sign uh, Linval Joseph, a two-time Pro Bowl defensive tackle, agrees to a contract weight up to $4 million. That's, that's, that's just um, back. That's um, tap signing. Um, and I noticed Marcus Golden is retired um, after nine seasons. I think he was with Pittsburgh last year. Um, so that's, that's what's developing in football. Um, I'm, I was talking, my son and I are big, a huge, and I, I was trying to be careful how he said this, a huge Dolphin fans. And I think if Miami stays healthy, I honestly believe if Miami stays healthy, and I, yeah, I can say it now, I'm often, I, I want you to challenge me. If Miami stays healthy, they can win that division easy. Miami could challenge um, and some people say just to win the first round, but I think they could go to the second, play, win two rounds, and they could either be in the AFC Championship game or the round just before that. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people are really handing Kansas City the championship already. But Chris Berman from ESPN always said that, that is why we play the game. You can hand me something, you can promise me something, but if you don't deliver, you don't get it. So, and if they stay healthy, then they're right. But if they don't stay healthy, it's a different story. They have been fortunate enough to stay healthy. They've kept Mahomes on the field. So he's been able to do a lot of things, like the little behind-the-back pass he did last week in the, in, the, in, the, in the preseason game. And they're looking to do more stuff like that to try to be more creative, um, try to be more exciting. So next week, or uh, maybe in the next week, Naughty and I will do our predictions on who we think will win each division. Um, who we think would be the playoff teams, and who we think would make it to the Super Bowl. Try to be obje- objective as possible. Try not to say it's Dallas and Miami, but we'll try to be as objective as possible. Um, so you can, you start thinking about who you think will win the division. You can get excited about who you want to see win the divisions, and we'll talk more about it um, as time go along. Um, baseball is heating up. Baseball is heating up. My Dodgers just took the broom out for the Seattle Mariners. Um, and manhandled them over the last couple of days. The 
Max Muncy has been hitting the cover off the ball since he's been back for the first three games. He's played well, a couple of home runs, a couple of doubles, some RBIs, I think maybe five RBIs in that. He's been looking really good. Uh, Freddie Freeman is hitting the ball. Mookie Betts is continuing. Um, um, the, 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 some of the players that the, the Dodgers have, have bring, brought in a, a trade deadline are starting to pay dividends. We're still without Glasno. We're still without Yamamoto. I think Glasno has a rehab, a rehab um, simulation game. If that goes well, then he he has a a yeah a sim a, a rehab pitching um, off the mound to see how that goes. And then if the way he'll have a rehab game in the minors, and then he'll be back hopefully by the end of next week. Um, Yamamoto is progressing well, um, so I think we're gonna have a healthy Dodger team. Gonna have a real healthy Dodger team by the end by the end of August, um, going into the first week of September. Um, Mitch will use September as their pre uh, pre um, spring training <laughs> uh, spring training 2.0, um, and I'm excited about it. They won't be as tight as they were last year. The arms will be a lot more rested. Kershaw has been looking really good, really really good. Um, pitched a gem the other day, and I think he's. But the Dodgers are off tonight. Flaherty looked pretty good last night. He wasn't too bad. Gave us a solid, a solid outing. And the bullpen has been pretty solid. Um, I can't complain too much on what's been going on. Um, I know Coach Seymour and I have been cussing our Dodgers for, for, but the injuries have played a toll on it. Having to work the bullpen so hard has played a toll on it. Um, so my son said me last day, Daddy, how you can sit there and just watch baseball straight through? I don't watch baseball till the playoffs. How you? I, because I love it. Because I love it. I love baseball. I love what it does. I love the excitement of it. Um, some people, because I know the game, because I, I, I study the game and, and I watch it and I read upon it, it I find it fascinating. Um, just how some people love basketball and love football, I love baseball like that. So, um, we're often, I text says, hey, you Dodger fan, get ready for y'all choke season coming up. Stay tuned. You know, we call it that, and I don't know, you know, if you really want to say that's choking if you catch a team hot. And I keep saying I don't like the way this playoff system is set up. I do not like it at all. You got the two best teams who finish have to sit down almost a week without playing any baseball. All your chemistry, all your momentum, all your, your rhythm is out. You have to re and then you come back to play a team that has been playing consistent baseball. Starting the the peak in their baseball, and you got you got to rev it up all of a sudden. Next thing, you look you down two games, and all of a sudden you're out of the, out of the playoffs. I think they should expand the playoff teams. I think they should have everybody playing from day one. First play eight, second play six, and just move from there. That way you keep them consistent in playing. That way you separate the the, the champions from contenders, and that way we get a real feel of what's going on. Not the hottest team, the wild card team, was hot right now. Playing a team that is that has been resting and not been playing baseball, and 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 when you looked at it, the five top teams in baseball last year got beaten got beat in the first round. The Dodgers, the Braves, the Brewers, the Orioles, and I forget the next team. All got knocked out early. All got knocked out early because of that sitting down for a week and not playing baseball, not consistently feeling the ball, not feeling the the the, the swinging the bat. Yeah, you have a little bat in practice. Yeah, you're working on, but that's not like a game. It's not like a game, and it's just, it just has not worked like that. So when I see that, I I I I'm not a fan of the way the baseball playoffs are set up. So I'm almost almost saying like, okay, San Diego, run us down. Y'all get the best record. Let's play wild card so we can continue playing. But then the prizes, I won that division championship. Definitely don't want to lose to the San Diego Padres. So that didn't happen. Um, okay, we're gonna get into the picks in a second, and then we got um, we're gonna talk a little. Uh, the final twelve is gonna be the genius of Chris Grail and the Miami Dolphins. They said he pulled off highway robbery. We're gonna hear a little bit about it. Some some players they got in that's paying off for them. Some things that they did that is paying off for them, and there's been some good moves. When after a lot of people have been questioning Chris Grail's drafting, questioning some players he signed, questioning, uh, just questioning his judgment. Just questioning his, his overall management judgment. And he's made some good moves this year. And hopefully they'll pay off for the Dolphins this year. Hopefully we'll see a stronger Dolphin team. And maybe we'll win a playoff game. Um, McDaniels has taken us to the playoffs. We lost in the first round, but he's shown progress. He's shown progress on the team. He's shown growth on the team. And I think we're going to see, I think we're going to see 
an exciting Miami Dolphins this year, people. An exciting Miami Dolphins. And I know you Cowboys, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna use Naughty's words. You 49er fans, you Steeler fans, you uh, Kansas City Chief fans, because you know there ain't no more Patriot fans in the Bahamas. They all quit and, and you know I can use their ways. I retire and Brady retire. You're not gonna see them anymore. So that's gonna be <laughs> no comment. No comment. But um that's it'll be interesting to see what goes on. So football is about less than two weeks away. Actually, two weeks from today. The, the kickoff. So you have football Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the, at the first and Monday for the weekend. College football kicks off next weekend. Um, a lot of big games coming up. Um, this year, college football goes to the 12-team playoffs, which I love. Well, but let me let me rephrase it, which I think is going to be something good. Let me see if I love it at the end of the season. So, so you're going to have, I think, powerhouse conference champions and then the next seven best teams. I think that's how it's going to be. Really. I could be, it could be six and six, but I, I think it's the five powerhouse champ, uh, conference champions. That's like the SEC, the Big Ten, you know, the ACC. I can't remember the other two. Maybe the Big 12. Um, I can't remember the, uh, the fifth one. So the champions from those conferences will automatically make to the to the college football playoffs and then the next five best teams. So... No matter what you do now, you can have that that 13th and 14th team feeling they should make the playoffs, but it's better than you when you've been having in the past. There's only four teams make it, and you have the teams ranked fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth who should have made the playoffs, who probably could have won the championship but didn't make it because they lost a game early in the season, or maybe lost two games when they shouldn't have lost, or they didn't win, they lost to Georgia, and so Georgia you didn't make it, Alabama or whatever. So let's wait to see how that happens. I think you can have a lot more parity in college football this year in terms of the playoffs. You're going to have teams from, it's going to be a proper, a better representation of the country. Teams from all over the United, all over college football is going to be the playing. So I, I'm, I'm excited to see how that goes. Well, let me put it this way. I'm interested in seeing how that goes and see how it works out. Um, but I think it's a good move by college football getting more players. Than, so I think... The first rounds will be the regular, some 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 regular. Uh, the first two rounds will be the regular uh, bowl games, and then the championship will be uh, in February. Uh, the champ, the semifinals, and the championship will be in February. Um, and I think that bowl games are designated, or there's be the championship being designated for that. So it, it doesn't take away from the bowl games. I think it brings more excitement to the bowl games. I think it brings more revenue that you're gonna have some playoff teams in these some of these bowl games. I think the Bahama Bowl is coming back to you. No, Bahama Bowl teams are not involved in the championships this year. No, they're not. I don't think you'll see that happen. The stadium ain't big enough to bring that many people because when you see them play, that's 80,000 strong, you know? So I don't think we'll see it like that. But I'm excited about it. Let's get into the picks. Um, there's a lot of games today. There's no Dodgers games today, but that's fine. And so we'll get into the picks. I think we have some WNBA today, do we? So we'll do what we'll do is we'll do a couple of May, um, MLB games. And then we'll do a couple of the, and then we'll look at, um, and we get a couple of NFL games today. So we're going to get one WNBA. That's the Dallas Wings and the New York Liberty. I like the Liberty today on the money line. I'm not taking the, I'm not taking the picks. Then you got the Indianapolis Colts playing the Cincinnati Bengals. Doesn't matter. Indianapolis, six and a half point favorites. I'll just go with the Bengals today because they're home. And the Bears are the Kansas City Chiefs. The Bears are two point favorites. I don't think very many starters of the Chiefs are going to play, but the Chiefs still going to beat the Bears today. All right. Um, some games already happened in baseball already. The Nationals beat the Rockies. Uh, the Cardinals, Nationals beat the Rockies 8-3. The Cardinals beat the Brewers 3-0. The Cubs were all over Detroit 10-2. Um, the Yankees won today. Um, they beat the Cleveland Guardians 6 to nothing. And another game is going on right now. And the 7, the Athletics are leading the Tampa Bay Rays 3-1. So let's look at games that are coming up later. The Cincinnati Reds are at the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pirates are hot in, in this fight for the, for the playoff lives. So I like the Pirates today. You got the Angels at the Toronto Blue Jays, who too are trying to get in the playoffs. I like the Blue Jays today. This is going to be a good game to watch. The Houston Astros are at the Baltimore Orioles. I like the Orioles at home. Um, they had a rough weekend, so they need that. A rough week, I should say. They need that. And the Braves are hosting the Philadelphia Phillies. That's another good game. I think the Phillies got a few games lead on the Braves. The Phillies are throwing Sanchez, uh, swashing back, throwing for the Braves. I like the Braves at home today. And finally, we got the New York Mets 
um, who's at the Padres. Cease's pitching for the Padres. Savarino pitching for the Mets. I like the Mets today. It's been a great Thursday. Thanks for listening. Thanks you all the calls. Thank you for all the texts. Um, it's been good to see. I got. Do I have a, one more text, Mr. Producer? I want to read quick. So I don't catch y'all for this. It says, um, "Are you think two offensive line would hold up the season?" I'm worried about the offensive line. Too many injuries, but we'll see how it goes. Thank you for calling. Thank you for listening. Thank you for texting. This has been a great Thursday. A great talking yesterday. Thursday. This is Pearly. I'll see you on tomorrow with Naughty at five. Uh, God in Radio ninety six point nine FM. Be good. Hydrate. Stay safe. We can praise God in the moonlight. Baby, if you with me, better do right. And I've been gone too long. And I'm hoping that you sing my song. For fast, reliable, and impactful printing services, look no further. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. We stand by our quality products that is second to none. Our affordable pricing and friendly, efficient staff makes Printmasters the ultimate choice for all your printing needs. We can deliver any type of printing services, from banners to booklets to business cards. You name it, we can print it. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. Located in the Nassau Guardian Building, telephone 302-2361. We're going to give you a check every week for a year. Percy Fenton Plan, Island Game, keep you with it. Percy Fenton Plan, Dream Big, we will help you live it. Percy Fenton Plan, Island Game, we got you. Percy Fenton Plan, from the friends you can trust. If winning is a must, go play the game you know, because your best chance is with us. The most trustworthy name is Percy's Island Game. So put 20 on your account and ride this easy train at Percy's Island Game. Shop early to get your uniforms and get Janae's Uniform Centers. Buy four, get one free sale. Free monogrammed and regular school shirts, dry fit and cotton polos, jumpers, skirts, boys long and short pants, PE shorts, underclothes, tights, socks, neckties, belts, sleeping mats, hair accessories and character work desk. Get 50% off backpacks, lunch bags and raincoats. Buy four school shirts, get one free. Buy two skirts, jumpers or pants, get the third 50% off. Need embroidery and monogramming done? Visit Janae's Uniform Center early. Beat the back to school rush. Janae's Chesapeake Road back to school special. Restrict Apply. Tell them. You're listening to Talking Heads with Naughty, hosted by Earl the Pearl on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Miami Dolphins GM Chris Greer committed highway robbery this NFL offseason, and we're seeing the fruits of that labor pay off here in training camp and in the preseason, and we have to talk about it. But before we do get into what Chris Greer did back in late April, hit that sub button. We currently have 58,067. We just passed 58K earlier this week. Let's get to 58,100 prior to Friday night's preseason game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and let's try to stay stack subscribers as we get closer to 59k and we got to get there early on in the NFL season all right so what is the highway robbery that Chris Greer and this Dolphins organization committed against the NFL where it's the simple fact of drafting Mohamed Kamara Jalen Wright and Malik Washington on day three of the 2024 NFL draft because we have already seen these three players flash how they are going to impact this Dolphins team in 2024 and beyond We'll start with the first pick Miami made on day three, which was Jalen Wright, the running back from Tennessee, who Chris Greer ultimately traded a 2025 third round pick to go out and get. So you know that he really envied Wright coming out of Tennessee when you trade a future third for a current fourth round pick. 
where Wright was selected at 120 overall. And Wright got off to a slow start. There's no denying that. He did not have the best minicamp. He did not have the best OTAs. He didn't have the best first couple weeks of training camp. But when he started getting into joint practices and that first preseason game against the Atlanta Falcons. He really started to perform extremely well, and we saw how dynamic of a player he is and how much of an influence and production and role he will have for the Dolphins in 2024. I mean, he ran for 55 yards in that first preseason game, ran for a touchdown, and had a circus 14-yard play where he bobbled a catch reversed fields and picked up 14 yards. He was absolutely terrific in that first game. And as he comes back from injury is only going to be better and impactful for this Dolphins team. And it's very clear to me and I will go on record. I don't care what people say. The Dolphins have the best running back room in the entire NFL. And I've made this statement before and I'll follow it up with this. Do I think they have the best running back? Absolutely not. But when you Factor in what Raheem Mostert brings to the table, what Jalen Wright will bring to the table as a rookie, what Devon Achan brings to the table. It is clear to me, when you stack those three up against any other top three running backs in the NFL, the Dolphins will reign supreme. All speed burners, too, running sub 4 fours. Dolphins have the most dangerous, explosive, and impactful running back room in the NFL. And getting Jalen Wright in the fourth round at the time seemed like a dumb decision because you already had HN and Mostert. I see the vision right now. It was an absolute steal to get right at that point. He didn't stop there, though, on day three of the NFL draft because the following round in the fifth round is where the Miami Dolphins selected Edge Mohamed Kamara out of Colorado State, 158th overall. And Kamara is just someone that I've been very high on the entire time. Another player that when he was selected, Dolphins fans questioned due to the fact that they already selected Chop Robinson in the first round, 21st overall. But Mohamed Kamara is someone that is an absolute dog. He has a warrior mentality and he has a motor that just simply will never give up. I adore adore Mohamed Kamara and think that he will have a massive impact on this team due to injuries to Bradley Chubb as he is not going to start the season with this roster. He's going to maybe start on the IR, but he's certainly not going to be ready for week one or likely week two, which means Kamara's number is going to have to be called. And I feel confident in him giving some snaps for this Dolphins defense. And you just saw what he's able to bring to the table for the Dolphins defense in this second preseason game against Washington where he had a sack TFL for a loss of five yards on a QB draw, if you will, from Jeff Driscoll, but also made one of the most impressive plays in the game where they threw a quick screen out to the left hash and Kamara, who worked inside the start, got his butt all the way to the boundary and was able to make a tackle after a gain of one and really rally to the ball. It's something that Mo Kamara will consistently show on tape, and it's the reason why I'm very high on the edge from Colorado State. We're going to talk about all three. We already talked about right. We got more to talk about Mo Kamara, and we're going to talk about Malik Washington here in a second. But let me know which player will ultimately be the biggest steal for the Dolphins in the NFL draft. JW for Jalen Wright, MK for Mo Kamara, or MW for Malik Washington. If you haven't been able to tell already, I absolutely love Muhammad Kamara. Unbelievable motor, an ability to be a game changer. And the one game that stood out to me at the collegiate level was actually last year, week two against Colorado. Colorado State, Colorado, big rivalry game, right? What did Kamara do? He only had three sacks and was on Shadur Sanders' ass the entire time. He absolutely wrecked that game. And although Colorado State wasn't able to pull off the win, it was a wild, like, double overtime game, if I'm not mistaken. Kamara showed an impact in the biggest game for Colorado State last year. And I think he has that ability to rise to the occasion for Miami. And he is going to be asked to be impactful for this team. And Going back to his college days, he won Mountain West Player of the Year or Defensive Player of the Year. Like, he is going to be needed, which we'll talk about more in just a second here. But we are sponsored by Game Time, the best ticking app and service in North America. And if you want to go to any Dolphins game or any event in your specific area, whether it be Miami, whether it be in New York, whether it be in Tennessee, Texas, it don't matter. Game time spreads across the United States and it's the best way to get your tickets. They have so many different features that makes using it so easy and makes buying tickets the most simple and simple equals good. 
You see the exact price when you're looking at the tickets, when you toggle the all-in pricing feature so you don't get blindsided by fees at checkout. You get to see your exact view from your seat with the panoramic view that they have. And they also make sure you have the lowest ticket guaranteed and will credit you 110% of the difference, by the way, if you look on a different ticketing service and find the exact seat in the same exact spot in the same exact venue on the same exact day for a cheaper price. So download the game time app down in crane account. Use code chat sports to get $20 off your first purchase terms to apply. But again, download the app, create an account, code chat sports c-h-a-t-s-p-o-r-t-s to get twenty dollars off link will be in the description and comments of today's video get started with game time today lowest price guaranteed Just continuing the conversation here on mo kamara that's, that's not like he's not going to be needed either folks like he will have to play early on in this year so will chop robinson and that's what makes this so intriguing to see how this dolphins edge group performs early on in the year because the first two games are key games against jacksonville and buffalo both coming in hard rock at home bradley chubb is not going to be ready for these two games Jalen phillips was elevated off the pup list a week and a half ago, but there's no guarantee he will be ready. I do believe Phillips will play in that game, but it's not set in stone that he absolutely will. Agba's going to be your opposing starting edge or your number one edge. And then you have Quentin Bell, who has performed so well in training camp in the preseason where it feels like he's a virtue to lock to be on this Dolphins edge depth chart to start the season. And then you have the two rookies of Chop Robinson and Mo Kamara, man. And those two will be asked to play big time Snaps, they will. Chop Robinson, a first-round pick, is obviously going to be on the field with his bendiness, quick first step, and we saw it blowing up a crazy run play against the Commanders, but Kamara will also have to play as well, and getting an impact player and a productive player like Kamara at 158 overall, yeah, that's a steal, baby. Last one, Malik Washington, which I think arguably in terms of draft value is probably the best here. Sixth round pick, 184 overall. Tom Downey, our draft expert here at Chat Sports, had him as a top 100 player and someone that he thought was guaranteed to go on day two of the NFL draft. Not only did he go day two, but he went all the way in round six. Pretty nuts if you ask me. And he's another player that's going to be called upon early on in the season and needed to perform and add some production to this Dolphins team. Like, I hate to keep on bringing up injuries. It's exhausting. But Odell Beckham Jr. is likely not going to be ready for game one. I hope I'm wrong on that, but I don't think he will be. River Craycraft has got a big-time arm injury. He's going to miss uh, extended time to start the regular season, which means there is a legitimately high chance here that Malik Washington or Braxton Berrios or Eric Azukama could be your third wide receiver in week one. And is that ideal? No, not really. But Malik Washington is someone that I could believe in throwing out there in the slot in a three wide receiver set to be paired up with Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell. Now, there is a very possible avenue that Mike McDaniel kind of abandons three wide receiver stats and just uses a lot of two RBs, a lot of two tight ends, hell, even maybe some three tight end sets to kind of work his way around having to use Barrios, Malik, or Eric on the field at times. But I kind of have faith in Washington being able to do that. And it's not the only place he's going to provide value on this team, which is why I think Praxton Barrios could be on the hot seat. Blake Washington looks extremely good as a punt returner and a kick returner, and that just continues to add value to why he is someone that is going to be on this team long-term and be someone that is consistently on this Dolphins 53-man roster. Through the first two preseason games, he has returned 14 kicks, nine punts, five kick returns. In those returns, he has been graded out relatively okay 59.8 from pff on special teams as a whole 59.5 in kick return and 60.8 in the punt return game but it looks more clear that he's a good better punt returner than a kick returner which is why i do have on the hot seat here braxton barrios braxton barrios has the same role that i think malik washington can play year one and to me, if they're on a similar plane and tier right now, why wouldn't you roll with the rookie and just allow him to continue to get more experience so when you have him under contract for the next two to three seasons, he could only continue to be better on that rookie deal? I think Malik Washington was an absolute steal in the NFL draft. 